Hello, everybody, and welcome. Welcome to the last day of Moodle MOOC 4. And our presenter for today is George Jokel, the third. And uh, we're going to get started. So you could just add the chat box where you're from. People will be coming in as we go. Uh, this session uh, was supposed to take place a while back, but um, for uh, reasons that were not of uh, any kind of control, it was not. So this is a chance for you to learn about salsa and uh, what salsa is all about. Uh, we're really excited uh, that the presenter is here with us. Uh, there's the collage and the presenter is right here. So uh, let's give George an applause. It's his first time on WizIQ and I think that's really exciting to have a chance to present in a virtual class about something as important as the salsa. So a little bit about uh, George, our presenter. Uh, George is, there we go, I can hear you, the Product Development Manager at the Center for Innovative Design and Instruction at Utah State University. So I'm going to let you get started so I don't take any more of your time. Of course, this is being recorded and will appear on Vimeo and YouTube, as well as on WizIQ. Uh, you're invited to use the same link that brought you here for the recording. Yes, it's that simple. The recording on WizIQ will be available um, in about, I think, less than an hour. Okay, so it's really, really fast. If you have any questions, feel free to add them in the chat. So this was Nellie Deutsch, for those who don't know, and our presenter is George. So George, I'm going to let you start. I'll put myself in the background so we only hear your voice. Uh, George is not going to be using a webcam so that you can focus on what he has to say, and he's going to be using uh, the screen uh, caster to show and demonstrate. So that's it. Thank you, George, for joining us. Well, thank you, uh, uh, Nelly, and, and as Nelly mentioned, um, I I did miss my last session, and for anyone that uh, had attended that session, I'm very sorry for doing so. Um, but yeah, let's get started today. So, uh, SALSA is an acronym. It stands for Styled and Accessible Learning Service Agreements, and um, what we're doing here is we're um, uh, offering an alternative to the traditional syllabus. Uh, we think, feel that the traditional syllabus uh, doesn't really meet the demands of today's learning types, uh, especially hybrid and, and online courses. And so I'm going to is where I'm going to be going, salsa.usu.edu. So you might want to just um, bookmark that site for now. And uh, it's, it's, I generally find it's better if you just, um, I'll, I'll pull up Salsa on my screen and, and just watch me. And then uh, maybe um, I would encourage you to use the application later. Um, so let's see. Initializing screen sharing, okay. Oh, I think you've got two screens open. Uh, you've got a mirror screen. I can see that. Um, or maybe you can make it larger. I think maybe, uh, maybe make it larger because, yeah. The whole, um, your screen seems kind of small. All right, let me, let me shut one of these down. Do you have two screens open? Is that, am I seeing that correct? Yeah, it's only showing content from one, but yeah, let me see. Oh, uh, yeah, more. otherwise it just looks kind of small.
sure how to turn this turn this one off. Um, At least someone in the chat knows. Anybody know how to? I'm not a, on a PC and I've never uh, seen two screens. Um, anybody know how that's done? Tom, are you uh, familiar with that? Uh, with having two screens? Ah, maybe you can just make it larger. Um, okay. I don't think it's. Is it yeah, happening? Yeah, make it just uh, larger. Here, let me stop the screen for a second. Okay, yeah, I think you may have to do it on your system. Okay. I think you're still screen sharing. Oh, okay. I turned the one off, though. So oh, okay. Okay, now that's, there. yeah, that's, yeah, that's perfect. Uh, by the way, everyone, you can still use the chat if you pop it in. It's um, at the bottom of your screen, bottom left side of your screen, so that you can continue using it while you while um, the screen sharing is being used. Okay, so uh, I hope you can see that. Can you see? Let me. I'll just add that. Okay, now it says. Okay, give me a thumbs up if you can see your chat box. It's at the bottom yeah, left. Yeah, you can go ahead. I just want to make sure that everybody's able to also um, stay connected. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. That's fine. So this is the this is the website here, and so this this project is uh, it's an open source project, and so um, it, we're located at Utah State University, but all of our code is actually up on GitHub. So if you come into the site, this is our project repository, and Everything I'm going to show you here today can be downloaded, and, and you can create your own instance of Salsa if you want. Um, but using our instance uh, is, is very simple. All you do is come in and create, click this button. So there's no um, account to sign up for. You don't have to give your email address or anything like that. What we give you is um, a couple of different links. This first link is an edit link. So when I want to come back to my salsa that I've saved I just come back to this link and I usually just bookmark that and then a template link is going to generate a new salsa that will be pre-populated um, with anything that I've saved in um, in my version so if I switch tabs for a second here and go to this example um, salsa that we've I've put in if I were to share this template link when somebody clicks on that it's going to create a whole new um, child version that's not related to mine. So that's a, it's a great way to be able to um, share your syllabus or your framework um, with colleagues. Um, okay, so yeah, when when we when we're talking about um, uh, salsa, it's an acronym for um, a couple of uh, different words yeah you can move it yeah you can it, you can actually move it lower it's um it's flash so just kind of get in, yeah and just move it down no not like yeah okay um so it stands for styled and accessible learning service agreement and um unpacking this word a little bit styled um in the sense that you have like APA style or MLA or Chicago, where um, you have a consistent structure to the document um, that's going to make it a lot easier for users. Um, and accessible has to do with web accessibility um, and, and making sure that um, regardless of, of uh, uh, 
a person's disability or challenge that they'll be able to um, use the document. So, um, for instance, if if somebody uh, is blind, then they will use a screen um, a screen reading program. And in order for that um, screen reader to function properly, there is um, a structure that it needs to see. Or if you have somebody that has um, you know low vision. They might need to be able to really in increase the size of, of the document dramatically, which, you know, if you have HTML, is very easy to do. And that's, that's what we publish in is HTML. And so in the slide presentation, there's another site um, called um, WAVE. It's at wave.webaim.org. And, and what I've done here is I've just put in the URL for this salsa that I've created. And, this will allow us to look at the structure. So if you can see, there's an H1 tag. That's the title. Then H2, H3, all the way down. Those are the kinds of tags that screen need readers need to be able to see um, in order to read the document. And um, I used to be a really big fan of PDF. Um, but uh, if you look at the standards now, uh, just having selectable text is not going to work with a screen reader like JAWS. Um, if they don't have these elements that they can see, um, they won't be able to read that text. So that was our, our goal is to, you know, develop something that was going to be uh, very easy to use and would create an accessible document so that it would be compliant with um, ADA requirements. So when we get into the tool itself, um, SELS is actually broken down into a couple of different sections, uh, which we call views. So there's information outcomes, resources, activities, policies, grades, and schedule. And um, we have a, a, a preview button here that you can click on. And this is going to show your actual document as you're creating it so you can look at it kind of all in one view. And then over here on the resources tab, we provided an example syllabus. So this will show you some kind of boilerplate text as you're building out your own personal salsa. Or if you're an instructional designer and you're working with an instructor, um, you could create your own example that models the types of things that are um, happening at your institution. So there's a couple of things I want to point out really quickly. One is the the university policies. It, uh, from what I've seen talking to people and, and looking at different institutions uh, around the country, uh, university policies and, and you know required language is becoming more and more common in a syllabus. And so what we do with this tool, uh, with our custom version, is that these university policies are just hard coded right into the documents, so that we don't have to worry about um, people finding the latest version of them. Um, for instance, with our students with disabilities statement, um, in talking with the director of the Disability Resource Center, one of the things that's very important for this uh, statement here is that if you just change even a couple words, two, three words, take something out or put something else in, you can really change the meaning of it and then um, it, it may not meet the re legal requirements at that point. The other thing that you'll see in our um, example is there's no real schedule in here. And a lot of times when people think of the syllabus, they think about really the course, what I would call the course schedule or the course calendar, where it's kind of like they're going through week by week and, and talking about the topic, but then also like all the page numbers and dates. And um, One of the reasons that we encourage people to keep information like that in the learning management system like Moodle is that um, that information is subject to change um, throughout the semester. And we're trying to create a, a, a document here that can be static, uh, especially again in, when you're talking about fully online classes and um, there's this, this time and space separation. I think it's really important for students to of the class are and, and the structure and to have that structure stay consistent. Now, you know, I'm very much in favor of, of dynamic learning where um, 
you know, the order of the content may need to change or, you know, accommodate for a guest speaker coming in or, or something, something else. But uh, that's why we're just trying to take a little bit more of a high level approach with this document. So is there any, at this point, are there any questions on the layout of, of Salsa? And I guess I should, you know, um, show you. So you basically just start typing into any here, um, and then save as you're going along. And then, like I said, you can preview um, or publish. Now, at this point, uh, we we do not have an integration with Moodle. Um, we are uh, reaching out to the community. So if, if there's somebody out there that is interested in using this tool and would like to help us with that integration, um, uh, please contact us. Uh, and that's You can contact me, uh, salsa at usu.edu. Uh, that's my email address. Um, but I, I would like to demonstrate um, really quickly uh, this is an integration that we have with Canvas, which is another open source software. And this is what we use at Utah State University. So basically what we do is we go into the API, um, we log into Canvas. I have it on this computer while also have it set up for you. Let's see. So when I come into Canvas, it's going to say, you know, this, this uh, application is requesting access to your account. And I tell that it's say okay and then this is going to load up um, a list and this might take a second because this is my administrator account that has a bunch of different courses in it okay so then once it's loaded up that list then I can just come in here and um, uh, select any one of these So if there was anything in this account already, it would, it would um, place that into this um, Canvas import tab. This is a class that doesn't have a syllabus in it right now. Um, and then when I when I was to ready to publish out, I would just click this button and then send it to Canvas. And what it would do is it would inject the HTML directly into um, Canvas's text editor. Now let me jump over here to this example that's already filled out so if I if I click on this one and I say publish um, this is the other type of link that sale that salsa is going to create for you so there is the edit link that allows you to go back and make changes um, the template link where you can share this content with uh, a colleague maybe somebody that's teaching the class or teaching a, a similar discipline um, that like to use your um, salsa as a template and then this third type is, uh, it's a read-only um, document that's hosted on Amazon. So this is really um, easy for sharing people with people that um, outside of Moodle, um, you know, people that aren't necessarily uh, enrolled in the course uh, or making your syllabus uh, publicly available on a website. And then um, depending on what browser you're using, you know, there's there's various ways to view the page source, and this is a uh, Chrome I'm using, so I just right clicked on there, and so once I have um, this page source, I would just basically come in here and copy this HTML, and then paste it into Moodle um, using the code view. So you can paste that into you know any page, or again, it, you know if if uh, it was preferable, you could just put this link inside there and then it would take people out to the instance that's hosted out on Amazon. Any questions on on how you would go about publishing into Moodle at, at this point where it's a little more manual? Okay. Um, so this first page is, is basically your information section. And with the plastic instance or the open instance of, of Salsa, um, we give you the ability to open and close different sections uh, so that you can, you know, depending on 
what your needs are. You know, um, some classes talk about prerequisites, and so you can something like that. You can type in whatever you want there. Um, you can add in more headings if you would like, and then when you click on the text, um, you're going to be given a text editor. Now, um, we uh, there's some limitations that we've made. Um, to the tool in, in order to increase the chances that people are going to produce something that's web accessible. Uh, so some of the lim limitations is um, we offer one font. Uh, we don't offer the ability to to change um, the size of it because, again, with it being HTML, really the, the size of everything is going to just all be relative. You know, So if I come into this example, let's say, you know, I can make this text very large. And then this styling, this H1 and H2 styling, is is built right into the tool, so that I don't have to worry about um, anybody losing that styling. Um, as opposed to, let's say, like if you had a Microsoft Word template, sometimes um, that styling can get broken. Uh, so you can add and remove these different sections, or put spacing. And when I'm hovering over these different sections, I'm I'm giving a visual cue with this hovering as well. Um, in the outcome section, one of the things that we have is um, a lot of people like to use Bloom's revised taxonomy as a way to organize action verbs. So if I come in here, you can see the different levels of Bloom's revised. And so let's say I want to create an objective or an outcome um, on the level of analyze, I can say uh, diagram, click on this, it's going to drop that verb right into my um, outcome string there, and I can just type in the other parts. Diagram the seven parts of the heart or anything else. And, and so those um, these different action verbs are, are built in, and uh, again, um, if you don't want to use those, you could just I just add another line of text here, and then just come in and type whatever I want. Um, but I really encourage you and, and encourage you to encourage your instructors to make these learning outcomes um, in, a, in an active voice and um, uh, student-centric. So you're talking to the student upon completion of the course, you will be able to, or the student will be able to, um, and then you want to create outcomes that are something that you can measure. Um, resources um, for us are all of the different components of the class. So if we go back to the example here, um, Canvas is the learning management system being used for this course. So you know Moodle would be a resource for most of your courses. Uh, technical support, if there's additional software, um, that your students need to get, textbook and reading materials, video presentations. These are all the, the various uh, components of the course um, that students have available. If they're taking a hybrid class, this might be uh, access to a, a non-campus computer lab, additional websites that you might be providing them with. Those all go under learning resources. And all of these titles right here are flexible, so, you know, if you don't want to call it learning resources, you can call it course resources or course stuff. So that's one of the things that I, I think a lot of instructors like is that, you know, depending on what the, the institution decides, you can make a lot of, you can leave these fields open and, and provide customization, you know, so people can use their own terminology where it's appropriate. Um, but then, Again, like I said, you know, some sections like the policies, um, you're given the ability to to have that as read-only text to make sure that all of the right uh, information is there. Moving on to the next view, activities. Uh, these are the things that you will be doing in the class. And again, one of the designs of, of this learning service agreement is to keep things at a higher level. So, you know, we talk about readings. In general, we're going to be reading approximately one chapter from the textbook, or you know, one or two uh, 
peer-reviewed articles. So it's talking about it on a kind of a general high level, but it's not going into all the details. Um, again, you know, our recommendation is that, that those details would be um, held within the learning management system with those details in Moodle where they can be um, you know, connected to the calendar and the gradebook and, and other um, resources that way. So we just basically go over on a high level of the different things that we're doing in the class. And sometimes there might be um, you know, uh, online activities. You can make a separation, and then a different section might be you know, what they're doing um, on Canvas. Something that they have to go and do out in the field. So there's different sections for that. And then policies, um, uh, we generally see broken down into course policies or instructor policies. Um, and then sometimes there's going to be um, either department or program policies. Yeah. So if I had, you know, different policies for my department, I could just put those in here. For grades, um, we offer the ability to have um, list out all the different items and then show the points, and then we will dynamically calculate um, this grading scale for you. So, if, you know, instead of four at 25, you know, it's going to be four at 15. I change this to 200. Oh, let's see. Then that will change my total points to 1,100, and then you can see that this scale will adjust itself. Now, in this version, um, this grading scale is also adjustable. So if I come and click on the lower value here, and I say, no, my A is a little tougher. It's going to be 95. When I click off, then that adjusts the rest of the grade cascade going down. So I could just keep moving these numbers uh, up or down to suit my needs. A lot of instructors like the ability to just have their grades calculated automatically. Save that change. And then the last section down here is a schedule. Um, like I said, you know, we encourage people to keep the schedule information in a learning management system. Um, but if, if um, they really feel a strong need to put this information in the syllabus, we encourage them to keep it as high level as possible. So, you know, possibly um, something like just the module, or if you're doing something on a week basis, you could type that in, you know, week one, introduction, assignment, you know, might be you know, introduce yourself, discussion. So there's, there's definitely um, items that you're going to have in your class that aren't going to change. Um, and you, you might want to share those. Now, one of the things that um, is important for accessibility is to have this um, caption here. So, you know, this caption might just say fall 2014 or it could list the course or just some identifier of what's happening with this schedule. That's what helps make this table accessible. And then um, just add in as many items as you would need if you want to have some um, identifier text at the bottom. That might be added PC side. There should be a little text field that comes out here, but that's a new item. Might have to take a look at that. <laughs> um, and then there's page breaks. So um, this is kind of a holdover from when we had uh, PDF documents, but if you do want to make sure that all of the information is on one page, um, a lot of times um, with grading, I think that's really important. You can put in a page break, and then that way, um, when somebody prints it out, it won't show up in the HTML version, but if they were to print it, then you can right there, and then make sure um, 
that all the grades information were going to be on the same page, as long as it wasn't more than one page worth of information. Okay, that, that's pretty much all I wanted to, to cover um, in terms of demonstrating the tool if there's specific questions that people have about um, parts of the tool or about uh, best practices with the syllabus in general you know I'd like to just open it up and, and open it up to questions okay that's great um, so maybe we can uh, stop screen sharing would that be okay we can, you can always go back to it, then it takes less time. I mean, it's just a second. Uh, I have a question about publishing. So the publishing, if I want to uh, get the code for Moodle, would be under publishing? Yeah, yeah. So I just click on that, that publishing tab, and then it'll do two things. You know, if, if, um, uh, for Canvas, you know, if you're logged into Canvas, um, and eventually Moodle, or, you know, like I said, we're, we're um, just looking... Hopefully there's somebody out there listening today that is interested in Salsa and is, is a little more familiar with the API than we are and, and can help us put together that integration. I, I feel like it's going to be fairly straightforward, but um, we're pretty big into um, uh, doing things in a specific context. So, you know, we're hoping that a, a Moodle um, client is going to show up and say, hey, we're ready to use this thing. And then, um, you know, we work with an individual institution to make sure that it works for them. Um, that's what I found in, in terms of being a designer. It's really helpful if you're if you're designing for a particular context rather than just trying to, um, you know, kind of create a generic something. Um, so with the other published tab, um, like like you said, uh, when you do that one. That's, that's right here. And what this is going to do is um, give a, a link to you um, out to an HTML page. And so this is a version of your salsa that's being hosted for you um, by us on Amazon. So that way, you know, when you come back, to edit your information the next semester, or if you have changes that you're making during the semester. Um, so if I was to say, creating a salsa for your course today, and make that change, when I publish, it's going to be the same link. And this link is randomly generated 30 characters. It has a 30 character key in it, but that is going to replace the information that was there before. So where is the embed? Where do I get the embed code? If you want to paste the HTML into Moodle? Yeah. OK. Um, for that, you would just come out to your browser and then um, view the page source. Oh, I see, I see, I see. I got it. I got it. OK. Yeah. yeah. All right. Mm -hmm. OK. Great. Just do that, yeah. and then the, you know the editor in Moodle, where you can click on um, yeah toggle source. yeah yeah toggles, exactly, and then paste this in, and then you'll be good to go. Okay, another question. From what I understand, George, we don't have to create an account. We just use the system, and it's stored. On the system, on um, at the universe, on your server, but we don't create an account. Is that correct? That, that's correct. And, and the reason why we're trying, you know, we did that is because we're trying to make it, you know, very easy for people to use the product without, you know, um, feeling like they have to go through the hassle of creating an account. So when you when you log in and create that, um, click that, create your salsa that actually generates a new salsa with a new 30 digit um, key and that 30 digit key is unique and random and so people will use that edit link um, under the my salsa tab 
to go back and make their changes to their salsa anytime that they would like. So does that mean that it doesn't take that much memory? It's not a heavy system? Oh, no. It, those, those documents, um, you know, the HTML documents that are stored are uh, very lightweight. They might mm. be um, maybe 100 kilobytes. Wow. Okay. Great. And right yeah, now, actually, yeah, right now it's in beta, but eventually will it cost money or it's going to be a free um, service forever? <laughs> yeah, that's a good question. So so what, what we're trying to do right now is um, we're trying to redefine uh, the syllabus space. And so by putting this tool out there... Um, and, and making it freely available, we're trying to really take away all the barriers um, for people using it. And so um, in, in terms of there will always be a free version as long as the Salsa project is in existence. So um, I hope that's forever. <laughs> um, but, you know, one of the things that we've done in terms of um, uh, giving people the confidence that they don't have to be relying on us is uh, is by um, posting that code out on on GitHub. So uh, if if someone wanted to go out and get this code and then create an instance of Salsa for themselves, that would be very easy to do. Um, so let me show you that really quick. So if, if I came in here and I came to the home site. I scroll down. So this is our Salsa project repository, and this is where all of our code is. And so someone could just clone this code and start running their own application. Now, uh, for any of you that have had experience before in running open source software, um, at times uh, it is more difficult than, than people make it out to be. You know, it's not as easy as just grabbing the code and, and going from there. Um, but what we've done is we've actually created what's called an Amazon machine instance. And, and what an Amazon machine instance is, is basically it is a blueprint for our whole application. And so instead of like getting the code and then putting it on Amazon and then having to figure out how to, con to do the configuration and everything, we actually um, could, if you have an Amazon account, we can just take this, um, this AMI and put it on your server and help you configure it and you'll, you'll be up and running in like half an hour. And, and there's no charge for, for this Amazon machine instance, um, machine image, I should say. Uh, Eventually, what we feel is that um, as people uh, start to use Salsa and it becomes a part of their process and their workflow, that they will see value in connecting um, the Salsas together uh, across an enterprise. And, and so we are starting to, to build out that enterprise level um, of, of Salsa uh, and so that's we're we're growing ourselves into basically a, a paid service is is um, is our strategic plan, but there will always be a free version of of salsa available. That's wonderful. So, in other words, um, if I have a server, what would be the benefit of having the AMS on my server? I'm, I wasn't sure about about that. Yeah. Let me let me show you. So um, let's see if we come in here. So this is a this is an instance that we made for Butler Community College. So we're hosting that for them. So if you what what people have done is they've created their own instance, and in most cases we've helped help people develop these as part of our development process to learn more about. Um, different contexts. 
So this this can show you the Canvas import tab. So this is actually what's in Canvas right now in this in this course. And this is a template um, that Butler has been using for the last 10 years. And so you can see we've customized some of this left-hand navigation for them and made it look like their institutional version. So they have a header, then they have instructor information, course information with some built-in things. Um, again, you know, they have some, what they call a learning pack statement. Um, so if people are using the four parts, they can just start typing right in here, or they can say, I'm not doing the personal development skills. They can hide that, or the analytical. They can toggle those on and off over here, and then come into the editor and just start typing in the different uh, skills. Um, objectives related to their skills. Their class information looks like this. This is their grading scale. So as soon as I um, type in more than 100 points, then the grading scale will come up. We've also given them the ability to um, do percentages. So there's some built-in controls. If, if this doesn't equal up to 100 points, then it grays out my table, showing me that it's not a valid structure. Um, so that would be the benefit of, of having your own instance of salsa is that you could create a template that would have its information pre-populated and so you know your instructors would come in there and, and just fill out um, the areas that they needed to and eventually what I think will happen is um, uh, probably going to see some level of of a structure for for most classes, especially the online ones, and then so that way, when you have different se sections being taught by um, different instructors, you know maybe a uh, you know a lead instructor and then some um, uh, associated professors or adjuncts, the you could really have one person kind of owning um, the the really high level look and feel of that course. Uh, and that way, I think, promote a lot more standardization across the different sections by saying, hey, you know, whatever we can agree on, you know, we're all going to have the same, you know, high level course outcomes or have the same course description. And, and once you make that decision, then there's no reason for each individual to go out and, and uh, type that in every time. And you mentioned this is free. I mean, the AMS... Um is a instance is um is free at this time yes. yep. so this this could also work for MOOCs um so that you don't have the same layout and people can have variety uh, that's what i like about it that it doesn't all have to be exactly the same I mean, it could be i mean the template but you can change uh, things around so that um you don't get into you know the sameness from each uh instructor uh I guess WSAC, you could also use this. Any any system that uses um, that has a server, and maybe that uses um, Amazon, could have this added to its system of courses. Correct, and you know, um, like you said before, these documents are these text based documents are are small, and so um, it, in terms of um, Getting started with Amazon, they actually give you a free year um, for a micro instance, and a micro instance is is uh, more than enough to run Salsa. So if, if you don't already have an Amazon account, you could sign up for one, and, and you wouldn't even get charged um, for a year. For people that um, are already running their own Amazon account, uh, probably be about sixteen, seventeen dollars a month um, for an instance. And then uh, for storage space, um, for the saved salsas, uh, we've, we've been calculating that it, you probably get about 20 to 30,000 salsas um, in a gigabyte. So that would be eight cents a month for storage. So it's, really? it's pretty reasonable. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's, no, I know Amazon's doing amazing things with their AMS. Um, and that's why people are using it because it's so cheap. And it's on yeah. the cloud. And, and really, you know, again, um, a lot of times people 
are wondering like, well, you know, what are these guys doing? Why are they, what is the purpose behind this whole project? And, and, you know, we certainly, um, uh, we've received funding from the state of Utah to develop a commercial entity and, and we're heading in that way, but um, we're trying to take a different path where we say we're going to work with um, some individual institutions to provide value and, and solve some of their challenges first. Um, and then once we have a, a very solid value proposition, uh, we think that Again, people will pay for um, more of an enterprise level service where you can um, do things like, you know, go in and, and manage the different um, uh, sections. I can show you um, really quickly, uh, I'm not sure if I can pull this up here, um, another uh, program that we have. This is, this is a prototype for something that will be built. Um, into uh, salsa. Let's see look here. So now this this um, is also available on GitHub, and if anyone's interested in that, um, they can contact me, or we can put a link up to it. But this is a, a core syllabus tracker. Now, again, this is designed to work with the Canvas learning management system because that's what we use at, at Utah State University. But, uh, you know, I, I don't imagine it would be overly difficult to modify this to work with Moodle. So basically, you can come in here and uh, select which organizational level you would want to look at and then the term, and then you can pull all the courses. So this is going to go in and um, find all of the syllabi for this college for spring 14 and then pull them up. And so you get some statistics here where you can see, okay, um, you know, 71% of um, the courses are open right now. Um, which ones have content in the syllabus page? And then it will list all the classes out by department. And so this is a this is a great dashboard for either like a department head or if you have somebody who's in charge of um, web accessibility where they can just come in here, click on an individual link, and it will take them to whatever is in Canvas. So this one is a, a Microsoft Word document. Um, if the course had HTML in it, so this one has HTML, so it just brings that HTML right in from Canvas and then displays it into a page. Now, if somebody has the right permissions for the learning management system, they could click on this link and it would take them directly into the course if they needed to make a change or a correction, if they had that um, level of permission. This would be great for accreditation um, bodies who want all this information. Yeah, and that's, you know, so there's a couple things happening in the silver space that, you know, uh, are real. And, you know, one is, is that, you know, it, the ADA laws have been on the books for 24 years now, and, and they haven't really been enforced too strongly. But, you know, basically what the law says is that if you put something online, it has to be accessible to everybody equally. So that means, you know, screen readers or people with low vision or uh, people with color blindness. And the great thing about HTML um, is that you can do that kind of web accessibility. Um, the kind of not so great thing is that those standards change a lot. And so that's another thing that we're trying to say, you know, in terms of a, a value proposition for instructors. If, if they come in and use um, the Salsa tool, where we have those web accessibility um, uh, design built into the product, then when they come back out, they're going to have that markup built in that they need. And um, you know, we're as we add in elements like we're doing some logo support right now. You know, we're going to make sure that those those images are marked up in the proper way, um, right? Which right now means having an alt tag, but pretty soon it'll mean um, having a long description if it's a 
if it's an image that's um, giving you information. And so uh, that's the other thing that I think is really uh, attractive in terms of, you know, ha having somebody use this tool is they don't have to become a web accessibility expert in order to, you know, create a, a web accessible document. Um, the other thing, it, like you mentioned, in terms of accreditation is, um, you know, there's a growing number of, of learning outcomes or course elements that these governing bodies are looking for. And that's, that's part of our vision too, is that um, as these documents are generated, um, when an instructor goes in and, um, uh, you know, requests that their salsa be published, um, that's all going to be determined upon what the institution wants. So for, for departments that we have right now, um, when they publish, one version goes to Canvas, another version goes to their website. Uh, pretty soon, a version is going to go to their um, digital portfolio. Uh, but as you mentioned, with accreditation agencies, you know, that information could be uh, proactively gathered so that when it came time to um, have your review, uh, it was just all there. And, and uh, it could demonstrate you know, the, the various requirements uh, for the courses. Yeah, that's, that's really important, especially since you don't have to keep courses. It's enough if you keep the, um, um, the syllabus instead of the whole course, which is, takes up a lot of room. Yeah, and that's that's one of the other um, areas that I think is going to become more and more important as, you know, with online learning and um, it seems like kind of there's there's less of a geographic monopoly, you know, even for local colleges um, and people are going to be want to um, take learning that they've done at one institution and get credit for it at another, um, the syllabus. Uh, is a great document for that if it's if it's structured properly where you can say oh okay well here's these different elements and does that line up with what ours does and then um, that way you can get credit for um, some learning that you've already completed at a, at a different institution yeah i think that it's really um george i think this is really for the future i mean i just came back from ed media too bad you couldn't present there this will be great for montreal next year i'm going to keep uh, in touch with you so you can uh, do this at the ed media in june next year um okay. yeah this this is really an innovation that i think is really what we need for i'm, I'm thinking of online learning and how um you know connecting as you said and getting uh, your degrees from diff i mean get taking courses and getting your degree i don't know from where but uh, maybe there'll be one body that uh, will give the uh, degrees and everybody else will be studying everywhere so this is really for the future i mean i hope in the near future and not too far away so <laughs> thank you uh I just uh, didn't know how amazing it would be, and it certainly is. So, George, uh, thank you. Uh, you're getting some responses there. Are you still with us? Yeah, I'm still with you. Okay, <laughs> great, great. Well, I really, like I said, you know, we're um, we're looking for for people that are interested in, in collaborating with us on the project. Um, you know, at, at all different skill levels. So, you know, if people have programming skills and they want to help at that level, if people, um, you know, have design skills, uh, if you have if you're just a quote unquote regular person and you want to provide us with feedback, we're always um, very interested to learn um, how the product is working for people. And um, yeah, and, and as I mentioned before, you know, we're, we've, we've, reached out to the Moodle community and, and um, we're hoping to connect up with an institution that sees value in, in Salsa and work with them to um, develop uh, a solution that makes sense for their context and then be able to share that with the community at large. Excellent. I've just got just the, uh, the university for you online and <laughs> I'll be connecting. This is amazing. Thank you. Um, 
thank you everyone thank you for joining us and George will be in touch uh, there's George's um, email very simple salsa I guess salsa at usu.edu thank you this was recorded and will be uploaded to YouTube Thank you.